Hello and welcome to another episode of Earth 911 Sustainability in Your Ear. I'm Mitch Radcliffe, your host. Uh, we're here back with another innovator interview, and this time we're talking with Ashley Meeky, who is a youth ambassador at the Foundation for Climate Restoration and also a student at Vanderbilt University. Now, we've had the Foundation for Climate Restoration on the show a number of times. It's a nonprofit seeking to encourage the development of carbon capture, sequestration, and reuse technology in order to reduce the 50 gigaton surplus of CO2 in the atmosphere that has built up since the beginning of the industrial era. So how fast is CO2 rising? Well, we all talked during the COVID uh, pandemic about how much CO2 emissions had declined. But between February 2020 and February 2021, the Mauna Loa Atmospheric Monitoring Site actually reported a two and a half parts per million increase in CO2 in the atmosphere year over year. Now, only 45 years ago, the CO2 level was at 330 parts per million. Today, it's at 416.75 parts per million. Even if we stop emitting greenhouse gases, that vast store of CO2 that we've put there is going to continue to warm the planet for centuries. And the, climate, uh, the Foundation for Climate Restoration is seeking to encourage the development of, of technologies to remove that. So Ashley's working to tell that story to young people and to older people representing youth globally. Ashley, welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm Good. I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's uh, always encouraging to talk to somebody who's uh, just starting out their uh, career and working on this particular issue. What was it about the Foundation for Climate Restoration that captured your attention? Yeah, so I was first introduced introduced to F4CR at the 2019 Global Climate Forum, and that's where I first just learned about climate restoration, actually, and I loved how much hope it brought me, and I can tell it brought hope to everyone in the room. So I stayed updated with the foundation, and I worked very hard to continue to spread that hope and advance their mission. Um, and I'm so fortunate now to be the youth ambassador board member for them. And so I'm just, you know, I'm trying to do the best um, at my job and spreading their hope, and you know, especially with the youth, um, just really advocating for youth voices and spreading the hope of that foundation. So how would you, in a nutshell, describe what the foundation is working to do? What do you emphasize to particularly other young people? Hmm, that's a good question. So I would say the foundation advocates for um, permanent, scalable, and financial climate restorative technologies because these types of te technologies are more and most efficient. Um, so just the advancement and focus of those technologies and also that um, the governments and legislation and investors also get on track with these types of technologies because the technologies are already available. They already exist. We just need to fully focus on them um, because they are the most efficient ways to restore our climate. Well, now you're a, you're a youth ambassador, and there was a 12 week program that's available for a lot, any young person to join and, and, and participate in. Tell us about what that's what's involved in that, and, and how did you become trained and understand the climate restoration method? Yeah, so um, the Youth Leaders for Climate Restoration program is a 12 week program, like you mentioned. We split it into three. Section. So the first section is learning about climate restoration and how to speak about it. So here the youth learn all about climate action, of course, how climate restoration fits into that, global climate legislation, different climate restorative technologies, action steps, and more. Um, and of course, they learn about different communication practices so that they can speak about climate restoration and what they learned. And they also have a speaking practice workshop um, to help them develop communication practices. It prepares you to participate both in the communications and political process, it sounds like. Exactly, exactly. Um, so that's what the first part is really about, you know, preparing and getting all the information. Um, and so then in the second section, that's the formal speaking practice section. And that's where the youth participate in multiple webinars, speak about what they've learned, um, teach their mentees about what they learned and about climate restoration. And we also have our world tour event 
um, every month. And then the last section of the program is mentorship, leadership, and citizenship. So for mentorship, of course, they finish training their mentees for leadership. Um, they have leadership projects. And for citizenship, we have community service. Um, and the way that I kind of developed and shaped the program is I was in a, a meeting with other youth ambassadors of the foundation and the idea came up about having youth train other youth. And I was like, wait, that's a great idea. Let's run with this and let's develop it further. And so um, I put a couple of all-nighters and <laughs> I developed and um, created the program and I've been working so much on it and working with the foundation. They have a great support system and that's what really led to the output of the program and it's been going great so far. So how many youth leaders are there now? Yeah, so since January, which we launched, when we launched, Mm -hmm. There have been 69 applications so far from youth in over 19 countries around the world, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, and so most of our applicants have been accepted, but we really focus and hone in on those that are super committed to our program, to climate advocacy, and to climate restoration. So um, out of you know, the applicants so far. We have about six people that we anticipate receiving their certificates out of cohort one and about nine out of cohort two. So we anticipate that number to grow, but those that are getting their certificates are so incredible. They have so much passion. They're devoted to climate restoration um, and they have so much to say and we're just excited about promoting their vo voices um, and making their voices heard. Now, you use your own Instagram site, Beauty and Brains Org, uh, as well as a, a business that you started uh, in high school, apparently, Hair Chronicles by Ashley, to tell some of this story. Uh, tell us about what you do. How do you communicate this story? What are the, the key points that you're trying to hit home on? Yeah, so I would say I primarily promote climate awareness um, and climate restoration through the program and through our program platforms because mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of the social media work there too um, with mm -hmm. Catherine, another one of our ambassadors. Um, and I would say Beauty and Brains is more so focused on Black women empowerment. So on their platforms, I create a lot of content um, catered toward, you know, the encouragement and motivation mm -hmm. of Black women. Um, and then with my hair business, I have a lot of content catered toward just providing um, cost-efficient services to natural hair women in my community. Um, so I would say most of my climate advocacy is through the program and through those social medias, but I have so many passions that I'm working on at the same time. Um, but yeah. Well, that's that's really something that, that you can take care of all those things on a, on a daily basis. I, I, I kind of know how it feels doing what I do at Earth 911. But um, the one of the features of, of, of younger generations is a confidence that business is really a part of the solution to this problem. Do you see entrepreneurial solutions as one of the keys to beginning to restore the climate? Yeah, definitely. I've learned that in developing and creating a program, I really had to tap into my business side and really um, advance my marketing and networking and, you know, all of these different branches of business um, within creating the program. And so I've also seen so many more entrepreneurial and business stories like mine that have led to the development of these youth programs. And so in that aspect, the business is really involved in, you know, the, de the development of youth and climate advocacy and these programs that really amplify youth voices. Um, and on a larger scale, um, businesses are used for all of these climate restorative technologies. Um, there's a multi-trillion dollar um, profit for businesses that are invested in climate restorative technologies as well. So there's so many win-win-wins in this situation. Businesses can gain economically, the earth can gain naturally, um, and, you know, be restored to a healthier state. And then humans can benefit by just adapting a more sustainable lifestyle and then living in a more habitable earth. So let me ask a, a couple of questions about just the perception of youth today, because I think a lot of our listeners uh, simply need to hear more of this. How do you see climate change shaping the way that you 
you know, what work you're going to do in your life and how you're going to shape a family or whether or not you're even going to have children. Uh, you know, my own kids are questioning whether or not they want to bring children into this world. You sound very hopeful. Tell us how the generation is feeling in your, your opinion. Yeah, I think. Um, what people may not understand is how much climate change really affects um, a person's life, especially for, for the younger generation. It affects where I may choose to live when I grow up. I can't mm -hmm. live in uh, um, specific places because it may be affected by climate change and natural disasters and whether or not the land is ha um, habitable. So um, I have to consider that when I grow up. I may not get to fulfill my passion for exploring the Earth's beauty due to climate change and, you know, the fact that the Earth is kind of suffering. Um, and I definitely know it affects whether or not people want to bring children into a world because, honestly, the world is suffering and we're in the midst of inhabitable conditions. So it really just affects, you know, the future of especially the younger generations and how we go about life and what work we choose to do, where we choose to live, if we want to bring a family into um, this state that the earth is in, it affects a lot. And I don't think people really realize that. So do you see progress or do you see more barriers rising as, as you participate in the advocacy for this idea? I see progress, honestly. Just within the past five years, I've seen a drastic big shift in the conversation around climate change. I think prior to, um, it was very pessimistic, very kind of like helpless, and it was a very negative um, conversation around climate change. Mm -hmm. But ever since then, like especially after I went to the 2019 Global Climate Forum, I was exposed to the hope that climate restoration has brought and the different technologies and strategies and since then the strategies have have um, become more and more prominent and because of that it spread more and more hope so I think there's so much progress in the fact that you know we now have hope we have a way out of this climate crisis um, and also the youth have really been stepping up we no longer take no for an answer we demand those in power to take action and hold them accountable um, and because of our determination there can only be progress because we're working for it every day um, we're holding those accountable and we're fighting for it so I think there's definitely there's definitely been major progress, not only in the attitude and the conversation around climate change, but also in the advocacy and, you know, holding people accountable and making sure that we're not only talking about restoring our earth, but we're taking action along with it. That's really encouraging to hear now. So this fall in Glasgow, Scotland, there's going to be the UN's COP26 meeting. And how do you see the foundation for climate uh, restoration and, and and the youth ambassador program having influence at that event. Are you are you preparing to present a position? Uh, are you going to be advocating for particular ideas as uh, as folks come together to talk about the world's next set of goals for pre uh, preventing climate change? Yeah, I think the foundation's main um, goal with COP twenty six is just just making sure that climate restoration is primarily talked about. Mm -hmm. um, we can have this conversation about the climate crisis and we can talk about how much of an emergency it is, but we really need to have a focus on restoring our earth and doing something about it. So I think that's really where the focus for the foundation is and um, the focus of the youth program is. It's just one, spreading awareness about climate restoration because once people hear that there's a way to restore the climate, of course, we're going to go all in and, you know, want to focus on restoring our climate if that's an option. Um, so just really making sure that, you know, that's a primary topic and COP26 is a big goal of ours and spreading that awareness and, you know, taking more action steps that's aligned with climate restoration. Now, a lot of carbon capture technology is, is of course, technological, a solution that um, uh, some people respond to negatively simply because it seems to reinforce what got us here, uh, more capitalism and profit for profit's sake. Now, what other strategies, in addition to carbon capture, do you advocate for, uh, such as planting trees? Obviously, we all need to reduce our emissions, but what are you doing? What 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 else? should we be thinking about in addition to carbon capture technology? Yeah, I think also 
So what people don't realize is that there's a combination um, of different strategies. Mm-hmm. A lot of focus is on, you know, the carbon capture, the synthetic limestone, blue planet. And these are great, efficient strategies that are permanent, scalable, and financeable. Um, but another one of my favorite strategies is um, with marine permaculture and with kelp forest, for instance. Um, kelp grows so fast, I realized. It grows up to, I think, two feet per day. So that means it sequesters more carbon at a faster rate. So it has that scalable component. Um, It's permanent because once that kelp through photosynthesis sequesters that carbon, when the kelp dies off, it sinks to the bottom of the ocean. And that's how that carbon is held there permanently in the bottom of the ocean. So it has that permanent um, component as well. And I think it's financial because it's a market for it because not only does it sequester carbon, but it also revitalizes marine life. There's so many species like otters and types of um, different species of whales that thrive off of these kelp forests. So it's kind of like a win-win-win for marine life, for the earth, and for humans. And it's a really admirable strategy. And I think um, it's more so on the natural side and um you know, there's so many benefits with all of the strategies, but I think people um, have to realize that there's not just one strategy. There's there's a plethora of strategies that are efficient, um, scalable, permanent, and financial that we can use. Um, and so, yeah, that's just like another fun one. That's one of my favorites. A few minutes ago, you mentioned that you, you know, questioned whether or not you'd be able to explore the world because, of course, travel is a CO2 emitting behavior. What kind of practices do you adopt in your life to reduce your CO2 impact? Yeah, for me, I primarily like you unplug all appliances and the electricity that aren't in use. Um, I recycle. And then I also realized that I have the capacity to um, limit, not limit, but take out um, beef um, from my diet. Mm-hmm. And I, I have stopped consuming beef because I realized it emitted a lot of methane, which is a very intense greenhouse gas, apparently. Um, so I think there's definitely an emphasis on just doing what each person can. You know, being sustainable doesn't look the same for everyone. So you definitely have to find what works for you. Um So I would definitely recommend that. And I think something that we all kind of have a lot of control over is what we consume. So if those listening are looking for what they can do to be more sustainable, they may want to look at um, what foods they're consuming, how far did the food have to travel to get to them, what processing did the food undergo, how is the food packaged? Um, So by thinking of these questions, you may want to change to um, adapt more sustainable foods and products and, you know, different things that you're consuming, um, basically, and, you know, change it and adapt it towards your life and what you're capable of taking on. But just know that it looks different for everyone. Um, and every action step, no matter how small, is definitely useful in this fight against climate change. Now, you also, do you limit your travel? Do you think about when you travel and, and make judgments with regard to using the plane, for instance? Yes, I definitely do. And I think what's kind of funny being one in college is everything's so close. So I primarily walk anyways um, for most of my time. And, you know, I'm really been, I've really been getting used to walking and, you know, if biking, probably when I get home, it's the summertime. And, you know, when I can, I'm definitely using more sustainable methods of transportation, walking and biking when I can, especially in the warmer months, um, because it's also like a win-win situation. I get to kind of go out and get a breath of fresh air and see the earth's nature and spend time with nature. Um, and I also get to make sure that I'm reducing my carbon footprint as much as I can um, to my capacity. So you're in school now. What are your plans after graduation? Will you be working in a career that's focused on climate restoration? Yeah, so my primary goal, um, well, my ideal, my ideal career is to be an international business woman. Okay. Um, well, there's there's lots of la- layers to this. So I want to be an international business woman. I also 
also want to do marketing and design for meaningful companies with meaningful missions like the foundation, whether that be climate restoration or women empowerment or cultural awareness, et cetera. So I kind of have a lot of layers. I have a, I have a lot of ideas of what I want to do, but I'm definitely not closing any doors. Well, that's great. And, and you're, you're making the right decision. Keeping the, keeping the window wide is a great way to find the things that really improve your passion. So tell us how young people can get involved with the Foundation for Climate Restoration programs. Yeah, so youth activists can apply to our Youth Leaders for Climate Restoration program through the FYCR website at the Foundation for Climate Restoration.org. Applications open every five weeks throughout the year. So, you know, it's a consistent opening. If you keep updated with us, there will be openings for you to apply. The next round of applications for cohort four of our program starts April 25th and closes on May 8th. However, if the deadline passes for that, you know, again, stay updated with us. There will be another application round opening every five weeks. You can also stay updated with the program on our social media platforms, um, the foundation's social media platforms to see more of our amazing youth. Um, we also have our monthly world tour series where we talk about climate action in different countries. So definitely stay updated with that and come hear some fun facts and passionate youth leaders speak about important topics and issues. Our first event featured Liberia, uh, which was super cool. And though we haven't decided on um, the country for our second world tour, we will be having that event on May 1st. So you can definitely watch out for that. You don't want to miss out. Um, and while you wait, or even if May 1st has passed, you can watch the world tour event on our YouTube channel. We're going to upload all of our events so you can experience, again, more of our amazing youth. Well, we'll be watching. And thank Thank you very much, actually, for joining and talking with us today. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored. This was a great time. Well, we appreciate it. Folks, that was Ashley Meeky. She is the Youth Ambassador at the Foundation for Climate Restoration, also a student at Vanderbilt University. Uh, we will uh, continue to track the foundation. It's a, it's a, climate restoration is a major passion for all of us at Earth 911. You can, of course, keep track of what they're doing at foundationforclimaterestoration.org. That's all one long word, foundationforclimaterestoration.org. Uh, check it out. We encourage you to uh, support the organization as well with a, a donation as we have. Uh, this is Mitch Rackliff. I'm uh, with Earth 911. You probably knew that because you all dialed in. But uh, we will be back with another Innovator interview soon. In the meantime, take care of yourself, take care of one another, and let's all take care of this planet that we live on. Have a green day.